Welcome back on board the Normandy, guys. So uh, we're just gonna finish talking to the rest of our crewmates because it's took quite a long time. So we need to go talk to, to James, who's uh, doing some extremely difficult pull-ups. <laughs> hey, Jimbo. Hey, Shepard. How'd it go with the council? Same as usual. Non-committal, unhelpful. Dude, get down. Bet they still wanted you to help them out, no? Yep. We're going to rescue a Turian Primarch from Palavan. <sighs> Sounds like fun. Never been to the Turian homeworld. Oh, what? <sighs> I didn't realize that was the homeworld. You come down here for something? Or are you just looking? <sighs> I don't need a reason to talk to you. Ship. I go where I want and talk to whoever I want. Fair enough. Not sure what there is to talk about. You already know my service record. Dude, I'm your commanding officer. Talk to me like a normal I human actually. being. I didn't have access to personnel records when we met. Right. Forgot about that. Oh, this is in, this is absolutely well, infuriating. Think you can dance and talk at the same time? What are you doing? Yes, I can, Lieutenant. You pulling rank on me, boss? We're just soldiers down here, no? Sure. But this soldier will clean the floor with you if you step out of line. Ha! You sound like my old CO. Oh, yeah? And who was that? Don't lead with uppercuts. Captain Tony. He was a hard-ass son of a bitch, but a good leader. Oh, oops. Was? Died. With most of my squad. Protecting a civilian colony from a collector attack. And the colony? It was either them, or the intel we had on the collectors. Intel we could have used to destroy them. I chose the intel. Sorry. That's a tough call. The best part was, we didn't really need the intel in the end. Because you were out saving the galaxy by taking down the entire Collector homeworld. You didn't know. You can't blame yourself, Vega. Who says I'm blaming myself? I do. You shrink too? No, but that stunt back on Mars was reckless. You're lucky to be alive. So? So, maybe you don't care if you live or die. Or maybe. I'm just willing to do whatever the fuck it takes to end this goddamn war. Nice, some judo. There you are. But if you're half as good as I think you are, we need you alive. Thanks for the pep talk. Anytime. Hey. Thanks for the dance, Lola. I'm sorry, buddy. No. No nicknames, Lieutenant. Okay? Your ship, your rules. Your loss. Do one, Colin. Oh, Colin, come, that, that was Commander. the worst. I was really starting to like him before. That was the least ingratiating <laughs> introduction to someone doing pull-ups while he's trying to talk to me, not even looking at me. Fair enough. I, I, oh god, that was so annoying. I really liked him after that kind of reckless thing he did on Mars, but that was just awkward. Calling me nicknames. Do one, mate. I don't appreciate that. Maybe that's just me. I don't like that kind of thing. Like, when you grow up with ginger hair, people try and attribute all kinds of shitty nicknames to you, so maybe I'm just naturally, like, averse to that kind of thing. <laughs> I just respond incredibly neg negatively to that. 
Okay, we can buy Medigel upgrades, um, mods, and Spectre requisitions. Wait, what? Oh, okay. God, this is a bit overwhelming. Can we only buy one of these? There's a 10% markup. I don't think we visited this shop, did we? Because I would have I would have bought this. So that would usually cost uh, 10k. Inferno armor. This is going to be one we can't customize, isn't it? So. Stability, that, that would be useful. And you guys told me not to get weight and ammo mods for the squad mates because that doesn't apply to them, it only applies to us. Okay, this is a sniper rifle. Uh, the Indra's low powered scope leaves it most effective at medium range, but many soldiers believe this limitation is offset by the gun's rapid rate of fire. The Indra is the first military grade fully automatic sniper rifle. It has an extremely efficient heat sink system that allows a surprisingly large number of shots to be fired before the weapon ejects its thermal clip. Um Sure. I know I could have got it cheaper, but These are all way too expensive. Oh right, these are just general upgrades. Huh. We're using the Avenger at the minute, right? And the Predator. Let's just have a look at this other one. Oh, this is the loadout. I didn't buy any mods, did I? That's not actually that heavy, is it? Look. I like this for the fire rate, so... Let's just be kind of single-minded here and upgrade what we're currently using. This is introducing like a new kind of RPG layer, right? Like they've reinserted a bit of the weapon system from the first game. Right? Quarian, okay. Hey again. What's up? Can we talk normally? <laughs> what the hell's with these nicknames? What's with you and the nicknames? It's just my way of remembering people. Some people just don't match their names, you know? So, I just give them a new one. Right. Yeah, it's just ignorant, that, mate. You mentioned a mission you had against the Collectors. What happened? Pretty much what I said. Things went foobar, and I was one of the few to make it out. If you want the rest of the story, you're gonna have to get me really drunk, or... Or what? That's about it. Sorry, Commander. Just not interested in talking about that. Next topic? Jesus, mate. You had a hard time leaving Earth. You still want to head back? Hell yeah. But I get it now. It's not where I'd be most useful. Not yet, anyway. We'll get back there. I know. And I'll do whatever it takes to get us there, Commander. Maybe no more shuttle crashes. No promises now that I've gotten the taste for it. Besides, I like to keep Esteban on his toes. Yeah, he's not listening, mate. <laughs> Have you got any family? You got family back on Earth? Yeah, an uncle. Retired military. Got a few cousins I haven't heard from in a while. You and your uncle close? Yeah. He was the reason I joined the Marines and was about the only good thing in my life after my mom died. No dad? He's there. Somewhere. 
But I'm not sure I'd call him family. Not anymore. I would like to find out how my uncle's doing, though. Fair enough. How do you know Cortez? I take it you and Lieutenant Cortez know each other? Yeah, Esteban did a stint on Fell Prime where me and my squad were stationed. I caught up with him on Earth a few months back. He's a good guy. Just don't tell him I said so. It'd go to his head. All right, cheers, buddy. I'll talk to you later. You bet. Uh, we've we've kind of already partially screwed up our friendship with him, I guess. But I'm not being called. What what did he call me? Lola. Do what? Um. All right. That's everything in the ship. Uh, I'm just going to change, I'm just going to double check this, our squad mate's outfits. No, it's just, it's just for combat. She's going to have that white, um, like doctor's outfit on when she's on the ship, unfortunately. Uh, I think I actually like, no, the, uh, the admiral, oh, the, you know, like the commanding officer outfit. That actually looks a lot better now. But uh, yeah, I quite like this. Mm, I'm not sure. It looks loads better than it did in the last game. It's just, that's just so all over the place. Isn't it? That looks nice, but we're going to look like an NPC. Fine, I'll stick with this. I'll stick with this. Alright, and I need to just finally do a, a, a full check after you guys... Uh, gracefully told me about the codex so there's the obvious new uh, sections like the reapers the reaper war the reapers um, known associates is new so we'll we'll, we'll round out Admiral this Stephen Hackett is a decorated officer in the system oh good god will you stop thank you Okay, it's only uh, Dr. Chakwa. Dr. Karen Chakwa is a trauma surgeon and a major in the Alliance Navy. She served... So <laughs> I bit my tongue while I was eating before. <laughs> my, my tongue's... I've got like a slightly too big tongue anyway, but... <laughs> I feel like I can't talk properly. So if there's a lot of sibilance, <laughs> I apologize. Dr. Karen Chakwa is a trauma surgeon and a major in the Alliance Navy. She served on the SSV Normandy under both Captain Anderson and Commander Shepard and was aboard the ship when it was destroyed by the Collectors. She later quit the Alliance in order to rejoin Shepard on the Cerberus-built Normandy SR2. Along with most of the second Normandy's crew, Dr. Chakwa was kidnapped by the Collectors and taken beyond the Omega-4 relay, where Commander Shepard eventually rescued her. After the Alliance impounded the Normandy SR2, an inquiry found that Dr. Chakwa had no significant role in or provable knowledge of Cerberus's criminal activities. She has since rejoined the Alliance. Okay. Um, what else might be brand new? Oh, there's one on Udina. Okay. Danel Udina is the lone human on the Citadel Council. Although he has a keen ability for furthering his own political career, Udina has long promoted humanity's interests first and foremost in the, in the galactic arena. When humanity won a position on the council for its part in defending the Citadel, the Alliance chose Captain David Anderson for the position. Udina became his advisor. Anderson eventually quit over frustrations with council politics and the Alliance named Udina to the office. Despite his unwavering focus on human interests, Councillor Udina is usually willing to collaborate with other species. Even his opponents concede that Udina gives fair consideration to non-human proposals, so long as humans... Humanity also benefits. The Citadel, Spectres. Oh, interesting they chose Teller for that. 
Batarians, Drell, Elko, Geth, Hanar, Keepers, Krogan, Quarry, and Volus, all read before. Council Spectres, the main three races. Uh, ships and vehicles. The SR2. This is this might be new. Okay, the Alliance has recently appropriated and refurbished the SR2. In addition to tight beam communicators, the quantum entanglement communicator provides instantaneous contact with the Alliance command. Uh, the Kodiak. Originally created to covertly insert Alliance Marines into hostile environments, the UT-47 shuttle has since been sold to allies, recovered by enemies, and had its spe specifications stolen by spies. In one form or another, this durable transport is now used in all corners of the galaxy. Eight model Kodiaks feature a front-mounted mass accelerator cannon that can be used in, anti in, a, in an anti-vehicular role. Since the shuttle lacks proper gun ports, soldiers often open the side hatch to fire on, en on enemies. This is discouraged in Alliance manuals since it exposes the interior to return fire. Flying the 47A during atmospheric combat requires considerable skill. The pilot must reduce the vehicle's mass for speed and handling while maintaining enough mass to resist recoil, incoming fire and inclement weather. More than one pilot has overstressed the Kodiak's field generator and ended up on the battlefield instead of above it. Um, I feel like these are from the second game. I don't know, I feel like we haven't read this. Yeah. A Sari made Solaris armor can resist even the tremendous heat and kinetic energy of starship weapons. The armor is nearly unsurpassed in strength because its central material carbon nanotube sheets woven with diamond chemical vapor de deposition are crushed by mass effect fields into super dense layers able to withstand extreme temperatures. That process also compensates for diamond's brittleness. The diamond armor itself has two limiting disadvantages. First, while nanotubes and CVD diamond construction have become cheaper in recent years, it remains prohibitively expensive to coat starships or aircraft longer than fighters in Solaris material. Second, the armor must be attached to the ship's superstructure, so shockwaves from massive firepower can still destroy the metals beneath the armor itself. Right, 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 right. A popular misconception holds that the diamond composition of Solaris armor gives it a sparkle. In fact, atmospheric nitrogen impurities during the super hot forging process give the armor a metallic gray or yellow sheen. Nice. Okay. A cyclonic barrier technology. Cognitive behavior therapy. <laughs> CBT attempts to solve the higher end limitations of traditional kinetic barriers. Traditional barriers can't block high-level kinetic energy attacks such as disruptor torpedoes because torpedo mass effect fields add mass. The CBT violently slaps aside rather than halting incoming linear force. By rotationally firing their mass effect field projectors, ships create rapidly oscillating kinetic barriers instead of static, static ones. Shooting through the CBT is like trying to shoot a target inside a spinning ball. Significant drawbacks to current CBT configuration prevent its use on anything other than frigates and fighters. Its many high-frequency sensors and emitters require frequent maintenance and replacement. A partially damaged CBT can endanger its operator, who's surrounded by rotating mass effect fields skewing in unpredictable directions. Fortunately, if an emitter is damaged, the CBT corrects to become a traditional shield array, a safety feature that makes it most effective during opening volleys. Yep. And then this is the Thanix cannon that the Turians made. I can't believe we're going to the Turian homeworld. I didn't realize that at all. Um, the only homeworld that I'd recognize the name of from the council races is, is it uh, Th Thessia, the, uh, the Asari homeworld. Uh, I can't remember the Salarians. After the Battle of the Citadel, human and Turian volunteers spent three months clearing the station's orbit of debris. During the cleanup, the Turians secretly salvaged Sovereign's powerful main gun along with much of the weapon's Element Zero core. Eleven months later, the Turians introduced the Thanix, a scaled-down version of the weapon. The Thanix's core is, li is a liquid alloy of iron, uranium, and tungsten suspended in an, in an electromagnetic field powered by Ezo. The molten metal, accelerated to a significant fraction of the speed of light, solidifies into a projectile as it's fired. 
hitting targets with enough force to pierce any known shield or armour. The gun can fire reliably every 5 seconds. The weapon's relatively small size allows it to be mounted on most fighters or frigates. It's now widely used by the Alliance military and is the primary weapon on the refurbished Normandy SR2. Interesting. Biotics, ESO, Mass Effect fields, relays, Medigel, Omnitools, read all that. All right, this is new. Uh, Omnitool weapons. Although melee combat applications for the Omnitool are almost as old as the device itself, the feature was largely unused prior to the Reaper invasion. The need to take on multiple husks in close quarters forced the Alliance to, to develop ways to enhance the tool's offensive capability. The most common melee design is the Omniblade, a disposable silicon carbide weapon flash forged by the tool's mini fabricator. The transparent, nearly diamond hard blade is created and suspended in a Mass Effect field safely away from the user's skin. Warning lights illuminate the field, so the searing hot blade only burns what, is inten what, it's in what it is intended to, the opponent. More technically adept soldiers frequently modify their omni tools to maximize stopping power through electrical, kinetic, or thermal energy. Some troops integrate the weapon with their kinetic barriers, transforming the Omnitool into a wrist-mounted bludgeon. Others fabricate flammable gases held in place by a mass effect field and ignited upon impact. All prove deadly surprises for opponents who expect a disarmed alliance warrior. Okay, so a lot of this might be new. I'm just going to double check here. So, like, if it's the Asari, is it going to say something? No. Like, you know, just about the war and stuff. Um, I'm, I'm feeling like they've gone a bit backwards here by making the upgrade system and stuff more complicated i know that they streamlined the hell out of it in the second game but i did kind of like that uh if i'm being honest um yeah so i'm not sure having all these mods back and stuff whether i'm gonna like all that micromanagement but we'll see how it goes Okay, I don't think any of this stuff is new, but I'm going to make a second pass. So um, I'm not going to mark all as red just yet. <laughs> okay, conquered systems. Right, clusters already conquered by the Reapers can be accessed using the Normandy stealth drive. Search these clusters for survivors, salvage, and valuable intel. Right. we zoom out a bit oh my god so we've conquered hades gamma kite's nest the exodus cluster so they've conquered that they're attacking the turian homeworld are you serious and sigurd's cradle that's where the cerberus lab is those are the only systems we're going to right all right 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 oh no maybe not Anos Basin. Basin. So, this Prothean artifact is the thing for the Volus, right? Alright, alright, alright. Let me just double check that. The Prothean Obelisk is in the uh, Shrike Abyssal. Okay. Oh, no, no, it's Eden Prime that that's talking about. Yeah, that's Eden Prime. I can't see half the stuff on the map here. Where's the Shrike Abyssal? Can we not access it yet? Okay, okay. Alright, I really don't know where we should go first. I guess we should just go and rescue the Turian Primarch first. I'm pretty sure that this is DLC. But it will be useful. Wow, this is going to be... Stressful. Sorry for taking ages there. Search and rescue. 
The Normandy is equipped with a new and improved scanning pulse that can detect objects of interest. Use this to uncover war assets, artifacts, intel and fuel as you fly around a system. Be aware however, each time the pulse is used, the chance that reapers will enter the system to investigate is increased. If a reaper enters the system you're in, flee and wait until you have completed a mission before returning. Right. Okay. Oh right, he's on Minet. Not on Palavan. Right, back to base fuel numbers. I'll use the scan eventually, I just don't want to get locked out of this system first. Okay, so we, we've never been here, right? Uh, Palavan, the Turian homeworld. The only thing on this planet that isn't silver are the Turians. It's all too clear they're made of steel. These were Alliance hero John Grissom's impressions of the Turian homeworld Palavan, seen by humans for the first time following the First Contact War. The Turian's martial attitude permeates every aspect of Palavan's society, from architecture to art to politics. It's no surprise that their homeworld was never occupied by an invading force until now. The Reapers, aware of their enemy's reputation, brought overwhelming force to Palavan and didn't hesitate to bombard cities that resisted and all of them resisted. The dust and smoke from pulverized cities is now a breathing hazard across much of the planet. Water and power supplies have all but vanished. Still, the fight here has cost the Reapers dearly. Interesting. They're screwed then. Palavan's weak magnetic field means solar radiation levels are greater than those found on other habitable worlds. Human visitors are advised to wear enviro suits and other radiation protection when, re when visiting Palavan. Population 6.1 billion, orbital station 350k, population estimates are pre-invasion, capital Cipratine. Wow man, the Reapers are here man. It's a slow destruction but they're here. So I wonder where Garrus is. I wonder where, because we've not had really any hint as to where everyone is unless I've missed a menu somewhere. Uh, I don't know if we're not going to be able to come back here, so I'm going to do some reading of uh, planet descriptions. Aventon. Aventon is named for a tactician philosopher whose, treati whose treatise on leadership is known to every Turian youth who pays attention in class. It's a small, hot rock planet surrounded by a haze of methane and helium. It was thoroughly mined for valuable minerals in the early days of the Turian space age, and since then it's had little to offer. Aventon's token spy satellites and defense drones proved no match for even a small reaper presence. And best reports suggest they've been eliminated. Jeez, man. So if we're going to get anything from these planets, we need to do a scan. This kind of suits me, because I don't even want to do the scan. <laughs> Kalax. Like nearby Aventon, Kalax was named for an ancient philosopher and author. But where Aventon wrote for the military leaders of tomorrow, uh, Kalax focused on those who feed, clothe, heal and arm the soldier. Her enormous tome, Service features a lengthy chapter on the laws that formed the basis for the Turian concepts of citizenship tiers. Kalax is lower in temperature than Aventon, and its minerals were thus exploited first. The Turian defences on Kalax are not completely destroyed, which is unusual. It may be that remnants of the scattered Turian fleet regrouped using the planet for cover and eliminated the satellite hunting Reaper destroyers before their mission was complete. More likely, the destroyers found a way to compromise the defences through wireless hacking, and the unmanned drones present, present now obey them. Wow, the whole the whole Turian system's been attacked. Hey there, little world. Impera. Impera. The small planet Impera is a hot house of helium and argon, the latter a product of decaying radioactive materials. Robo mining was once lucrative here, but like the rest of the solar system, the only remaining veins are inaccessible by cost-effective means. 
The planet is named for Atrin, Imper Atrin Impera, the Turian Machiavelli, whose ambitious political philosophies led her to reign as regents in the continent-spanning Nihilin Empire for more than a decade. She famously combined citizenship tiers with a meritocracy rather than a caste system, which served to strengthen her empire. This practice fell in and out of favour for centuries before its revival early in the Turian's age of nation-states. The Reaper invasion largely ignored Impera, sending only a token force to destroy the scientific equipment around the planet. Yeah, so the Reapers are still kind of stretched thin in some, in some ways, right? Essenus. Essenus is a hydrogen-helium gas giant that was home to a substantial Turian garrison defending the planet's fuel infrastructure. It once held a distribution center for anti-proton-based fuel as well as the more common helium-3 collectors. The garrison is now gone. The Reapers drove the Turians off and destroyed all available machinery. The Reapers appear to have moved on. A few Volus ships are now visible, likely present to scavenge the wreckage. <sighs> wow. See, I'm, I'm just now kind of getting this, understanding the scope of this, aren't I? It's mad. Okay, Manet. Palavan's largest moon has been shrouded in secrecy since the dawn of the Turian Space Age. During the Krogan rebellions, the hierarchy classified nearly all data on Manet and its sister moon, Nanus, because they feared the Krogan could use the moons as weapons by smashing them into Palavan's sur surface. However, some information has leaked out. Images of Turian bases where personnel walk without enviro suits indicate advanced infrastructure, likely a network of subterranean tunnels with powerful mass effect field generators that retain heat and atmosphere over swaths, swathes of, of the surface. The Reaper's plan for bombarding the bases were met with fierce resistance by the Turian fleet and the moon's anti-aerospace defenses. With their easy victory stalled, the Reapers deployed a variety of ground units to take the bases one at a time. The Turians have the advantage on the moon, but the Reapers have the patience to slowly grind them down. With every base captured, the Reapers deny the Turian fleet another place to repair or refuel. Alright, we're going in. We're going in. We've only got two squad mates, so... That makes him look like he works for Cerberus. No. Oh, he's got like a slight mohawk, I didn't realize. Yeah, let's just go with that. Let's do it. Okay, I'm happy staying relatively light so that we can spam our abilities. Uh, weight doesn't apply to these guys, does it? Um. James's shotgun. Yeah, I'm happy with him having the Avenger. Um, yep, okay. That's all the arrows got. Now, I haven't got any heavy weapons. We could take a sniper rifle. Because we're so light. But... It means we can spam our abilities, doesn't it? So I'm going to risk just taking the two weapons for this because so, we're an engineer. Right, I do have a lot of points. So it seems like the best way to go is to just combo incinerate and, incinerate and overload like crazy here. Um, so we do need to invest in fitness a bit, but I, th I feel like we should get more points in overload. Increase damage, hit one additional target, recharge speed, incapacitate weaker enemies, shield damage, that's good. Damage by 15%. Okay, I like this bottom tree. Yeah, I like this bottom tree, so that's four points. Um, and five points. Yeah, this recharge speed is golden. You see, I like this because I regularly use this to hit barriers and shields. An additional hunt that is that's big. That is big. 
Yeah, I'm happy with that. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I'm happy with that. I don't think I can upgrade anything else on the Ara. Oh yeah, I probably can actually. Um, warp is the strongest thing though. I'll let the points build up a bit more. Right, you've got a few more points. You guys told me that um, grenades are actually a lot more useful in this game. Uh, they do a lot of damage, so I am going to put some points into grenades for hammers. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Well, that took me half an hour to get here, but... Wow! Wow! Oh my days, the Reapers! Stay stealthy, Joker. Oh, that's crazy. The scale of this is just really unfathomable. And the aura looks class. Oh no. No. Palavin. We have an old friend there. Holy hell. They're getting decimated. Strongest military in the galaxy, and the Reapers are obliterating it. Was it like this on Earth? Yep. Yes. Shepard. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Commander, the LZ's getting swarmed. James, open that hatch. Let's do it. Back in the gold, baby. Um, we're going to have to get used to this, aren't we? Hey there, chaps. Soldier, which way to your commanding officer? Straight ahead and around the corner, past the first barricade. Stay strong, guys. Bigger ones on Earth. A whole lot of them. Goddess. Let's just check out Liara's outfit. I don't know. I didn't think. I didn't think it was a skimpy outfit or anything. But it might be. So fair enough. That's not why I equipped it. Okay, where's the CO? It's obviously these guys. Let's just explore a touch. I 
Oh, um, uh, a pistol piercing mod. Okay. I'll check that out in a second. Right, let's go talk to the guy. Tabestic, get your men up on that north barricade. Yes, sir. Sergeant Bardas, find a way to get that comm tower operational. Sir. General. Commander Shepard, heard you were coming, but I didn't believe it. General Corinthus. I've come to get Primarch Fedorian. Primark Fedorian is dead. His shuttle was shot down an hour ago as it tried to leave the moon. That's gonna complicate things. Take it, this isn't going well. How bad is it, General? We just lost about 400 men in half an hour. We set up camps on this moon as an advanced position to flank the enemy. A sound strategy. Just... Irrelevant. Exactly. The sheer force of the Reapers seems to make them immune to that sort of tactic. The Primarch and his men found that out the hard way. Yeah, I'm sorry, mate. I'm sorry. I hear he was a good man. And a friend. He would have been an outstanding diplomat. So what happens now? The Turian hierarchy provides very clear lines of succession. Right. General Corinthus? With such heavy casualties, it's hard for me to be certain who the next Primarch is. Palavan Command will know. However, at the moment, contacting them is impossible. The comm tower is out. Okay. Pasks are swarming that area. We can't get close enough to repair it. Don't worry, General. I'll get your tower operational. Thank you, Commander. I'll take care of things on this end. All right, let's go. I see the comm tower, to the left of the main barricade in front of Paladin. Let's go! I can't tell if it's just blue coloured or it's a skin showing. No, it's just, it's got blue colours on it. Right, okay. Commander Hexnar supplies. They sent us winter gear. Not sure why they thought what they thought we'd do with that kind of gear here, but I suppose we should thank the spirits nonetheless. The power sources can be cannibalized and converted to power our combat gears, filtering units instead, at least. It'll be nice not to have those clogging up anymore. Nice, 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 nice. Man, there's gear lying around everywhere. Um, that's something for a shot. That's a shotgun, right? No map. Just uh, checkpoints, which I appreciate. Yeah, we'll see about these husks. Can't repair it from this panel. 
Um, Liara? Liara, see if you can repair it. I'll go up and have a look. If you can keep husks from climbing up behind me, I'd appreciate it. Yeah. I think I... Here they come. Ready, James? Hell yeah. Let's take them. I think a James is a wrecking ball, so. Shepard, I've repaired the tower's main satellite connection. On my way down. Okay. General, do you read? Comp tower is now operational. Much appreciated, Commander. I'll contact Palavan Command. Let me know when you've got something. I'll help your men till I hear from you. Understood. Shepard out. Jesus. Commander Shepard, come in. Whew. Go ahead. I have information from Palavan Command. Please return ASAP. On our way. And that sound is going to haunt my dreams. Hold the fort, guys. Unlimited cardio. Man, I had to play the game for 120 hours before I got unlimited cardio. Can run like Forrest Gump. What have you got? As your partner said, succession is usually simple, but right now the hierarchy's in chaos. So many dead are MIA. I need someone, I don't care who, as long as they can get us the Turian resources we need. I'm on it, Shepard. We'll find you the Primarch. No way. Garrus. Vicarian, sir. I didn't see you arrive. At ease, General. Good to see you again. I thought you'd be on Palavin. If we lose this moon, we lose Palavin. I'm the closest damn thing we have to an expert on Reaper forces, so I'm advising. James, this is Garrus Vicarian. He helped me stop the Collectors. He's a hell of a soldier. Lieutenant, good to see you too, Liara. Good to see you in one piece, Garrus. General Corinthus filled me in. We know who we're after. Palavan Command tells me that the next Primarch is General Adrian Victus. Victus? His name's crossed my desk. Know him, Garrus? I was fighting alongside him this morning. Right. Lifelong military. Gets results. Popular with his troops. Not so popular with military command. Has a reputation for playing loose with accepted strategy. What, well, as in being a bit ruthless? What do you mean? On Tatris, during the uprisings, his squad discovered a Salarian spy ring about the same time the Turian Separatists did. Rather than neutralize the ring, he fell back. He even gave up valuable fortifications which the rebels took. Then, the Rebels attacked the Salarians, and when both groups had worn each other down, Victus moved back in. Didn't lose a man. Bold strategy, but wild behavior doesn't get you advanced up the meritocracy. Primarch Victus. That should be something to see. Can we trust him? You think he can get the job done? We both know conventional strategy won't beat the Reapers. Right, right now, he could be our best shot, and I trust him. Okay, that's good enough for okay. me, Garrus. Get him on the shuttle and get out of here. Commander! Shepard, come in! 
Can this wait, Joker? We're in the middle of a war zone. We've got a situation on the Normandy, Commander. It's like she's possessed. Shutting down systems, powering up weapons. I can't find the source. Yeah, it's the I need the Normandy AI. standing by. We may have to bug out. Should I go back and take a look? Do it. Okay. Garris, you said you were with Victus this morning? Yeah, but we got separated. He went to bolster a flank that was breaking. Could be anywhere out there. We're trying to raise him, Commander. Incoming Harvester! Headed for the airfield! Oh my god! A dragon! General, tell Primarch Victus we'll rendezvous here. In the meantime, let's go take care of whatever that thing dropped off. Coming, Garrus? Damn straight he is. I'm right behind you. Right. Let's get Garrus uh, leveled up. Proximity mine. Fire this sticky mine into traffic. It'll detonate when an enemy steps within range. Okay. Okay, so obviously we um, we take level one in everything. Uh, we upgrade Shirian Rebel. A fair whack. Um. Yeah, let's let's uh, bump up concussive shot. Far in concussive shot. Um. Explosives seem like they're going to be kind pretty useful, right? Increased weapon damage by 40%, health and shields. He's a he's a back he's more of a, a back range, isn't he? So I think we take the flat damage. Of course. What is power damage? Oh by as in his abilities. Okay, assault rifle damage by 50%, sniper rifle by 60%, power damage of squad mates by 10%. Mm, not not necessarily a fan of that. So that will buff concussive shot. Proximity mine. An overload. I don't know what effect that will have on armor piercing ammunition. Uh, that's such a heavy increase to assault rifle damage, dude. I think we gotta take that. Yeah, and sniper rifle damage, that's huge as well. Okay, we've got six more points. Um, we've got overload. That's so we could get proximity mine up, up uh, a bit better, or we could invest all the way into concussive shot. Increase force and damage. Increase impact radius. Yeah, I think we go for this. To be honest, dude. Just, just more damage, more damage. Um, right, let's go deal with this. James, that you breathing so hard? <laughs> the atmosphere's a little thinner than I'm used to, is all. Adrenaline's better than oxygen any day. Oh god, it's normal soldiers. A marauder? Just me? Miss. You dodging. Uh, 
I think we're done here. Okay, magazine upgrade. Uh, let's just scour the battlefield quickly. Don't think there's any upgrades. No, 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 no. Oh god, yeah, there is. What was that? What was on here? I was just credits. I thought this was like a new weapon for us. Oh, this is mad. Oh, we're going to operate a turret section. Okay. These things are mince meat. They're doing like superhero landings, these husks. See a damn thing. Can I still use my abilities? What the hell is that? What is that thing? A berserker? Created an explosion. Oh, really? Hey, Shepherd, Corinthus here. I didn't know. Oh. What's the word of the Primarch? Still can't get a stable calm link. Okay, I'm going on foot. Shepherd out. Garrus, take me to the last place you saw Victus. Okay. Okay. Right, guys. Really sorry. I'm going to have to end the episode. <laughs> I, took, I spent so much time reading stuff at the beginning. I apologize. But, um, yeah. We're going to pick it up here next time. Go get the Cheerian leader. I still can't talk. Um, and, yeah. I'm not even going to get to re uh, play this immediately now either. So, <laughs> I'm going to have to render and upload. So, um, we'll pick it up from here next time. Uh, the combat's really enjoyable. Uh, I'm, f I'm fairly sure I was comboing Incinerate and Overload there to create an explosion. Uh, let me know if I, if I wasn't, wasn't doing it right or I just need quicker uh, cooldowns. But anyway, uh, loads of new enemy varieties. I didn't even see how that guy died. Garrus or uh, James must have taken care of him. So, uh, Oh, there's a photo mode. Hmm, interesting. Thumbnails. Oh, there's been a photo mode in all of them, haven't But it's just not very good. I don't know if this one will be better. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a like if you did. Just remember, everyone, never trust an on-crate. I'll see you um, on Palavin's moon.